I started starting businesses because I was unemployed and unemployable and disliked bosses a lot. And I was very unemployed. So my brother and I started our first business and it was modestly successful and I enjoyed that a great deal. So in some ways I have simply continued to do what I started to do and I accidentally fell into being an entrepreneur. Having said that, especially in the last few years, it has become clear to me that there is method in entrepreneurialism, that one can not only start businesses, but one can start them faster and faster with less and less capital to greater and greater effect, both for one's own profit and for impact on the world. And so I'm starting to see that perhaps you can do a lot more with a startup than just to start a business. We are going through a revolution again. I mean, I know the internet was a revolution in 96 and it was a revolution in 2002 with Web 2.0. There is another transformation happening yet again. The costs of starting a business are being decimated again. The speed with which you can bring something to the world is increasing in speed again. And therefore, a sufficiently large quantitative change implies a qualitative change. Meaning, if in fact it, we can do the whole thing again much, much, much faster, we're going to be able to do different businesses in different ways. And I'm confident the world hasn't caught up to this yet. And thus, I think that there's a new way to start a business coming, and it takes very little time, very few people, very little capital, and can be profitable quite quickly. Thus, I think the rules are about to change again. Build something people want. Now, you've got to think to yourself, how obvious is that? And the answer is, it is obvious, and yet, most businesses and most business plans fail at that step because they cannot prove to me that the thing that they want to build, people will want. Because it's not just build what they, people want, it's if you intend to build something before you build it, know that they will want it. And upon knowing they want it, that you can deliver it at a price less than it will cost. Pricing is the biggest issue I find. And so I, rule two, pricing is discovered, not invented. I have no, you have no idea. I even went to the National Business Link site just to remind myself how awful advice can be. And they said, this is how you price. I'm shortening it. But in sum, they said, take the amount it costs, take the sum of your overheads, add some profit, and that's your price. No, that is not your price. That is your desire. The price is when you walk out into the marketplace and say to somebody, how much pain are you suffering? Let me quantify it. And I have a solution to that pain, and therefore my solution must cost less than what it costs you to suffer today. Prices are all based on the ceiling of the price of the problem. And so you discover the price by understanding what you're solving. You do not discover the price by building up the sum of your costs. And yet, that's the standard solution, isn't it? And as I am a disciple of the ultralight startup, the notion that as many costs as possible should be variable and you should have as few costs as possible, thus making it simply much easier to succeed. And that you have to divorce your ego from your business. People measure things wrongly. They measure the size of their business. God, I don't know how many times I've said to somebody, so how big a business do you have? And they will tell me the number of people they have, or they will tell me the size of office they just took on. Those aren't measures of business. Those are measures of lack of success. Those are measures of burden. Those are the weights that hold the business down. If you don't need offices, don't have offices. If you don't need another employee, well, don't hire them. Do everything you can to avoid increasing your costs. And I'm not saying be cheap, I'm saying be smart. Look to partners, find other people that you can share benefits with. And so the proper discipline today is to understand what people should have understood a long time ago and which the world is making a lot easier to do. And that is you can run a business on very few dollars, I'm sorry, pounds, and do so more and more effectively with less and less compromise. And this is true across every line of the P&L statement. I do not think that one should start a business aiming it at being acquired because I think that's a false promise. I think you have to start a business with a very specific intent of building a product people want, full stop. 
and that that product that you build has to be able to be sold profitably, full stop. So there's simply no compromise on those two statements. If I start a business or I invest in a business, I want that product or service to be clearly demonstrable as filling a need or fulfilling a desire. But it has to do so, and the costs of delivering that have got to be less than the price people are willing to pay, and therefore it has to be inherently profitable. Sometimes the process of getting to that means you run the business at a loss. That's the capital investment of the business. But that should be the nature of the model and the plan. It should be obvious that that's the case. Some, you know, if you're going to start a semiconductor company, you're not going to make your first profit for many years on. There's a capital cost of playing the game. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with starting semiconductor companies. And it also doesn't mean that you're starting the business with the intent of acquisition. It's just an outcome of the type of business you're starting. Being an entrepreneur still requires pretty much the same stuff. In fact, if, if anything, it amplifies some of the key skills. I think where the disagreement tends to arise is what are the key skills to be a successful entrepreneur. I'm afraid I'm a contrarian there as well as like everything else. Um, I don't think persistence is the key skill. I don't think hard work is the key skill. In fact, I think that's vastly overrated because you can work hard and fail quite easily. Uh, in, in t intelligent laziness is in fact better because it means you'll try to do things more efficiently. Um, I think the key skills of an entrepreneur are the ability to communicate very effectively because you are selling a story in every direction to vendors, to partners, you know, and partners are more important than ever, to potential customers. Everybody has to believe in what you're talking about because it hasn't happened yet. That storytelling skill is going up, not down. Um, you have to remain current. You don't have to be young. You just have to be current. Even old folks like me can stay current, perhaps with more effort. But you, you can't be you know, a self-professed Luddite. I don't take great stock in that sort of orneriness, and I think it is a disservice. I stay current by getting narrower, because the world is getting broader faster than I can keep up. Um, I intentionally force myself to learn new things. I use new technology. I adopt stuff, whether I really need to or not. I I put myself in awkward positions. So last year I decided to live a life where I only used software and services that were web-based. This does not always work. I can tell you this with great authority. But by forcing myself to be a purist in that fashion, it evidenced for me exactly the state of game and where we were and what I could do and couldn't do and how much I could do and all the gaps and all the different things. I mean, God, it was product today for a while there that I was inventing, most of which I'll never bother to do, but many of which would have made great little pocket businesses. I mean, you could have just, it is, we have opportunities like diamonds on the ground in front of us right now. The problem with startups is they absolutely require too many things to get done. Thus, you have to be utterly ruthless at prioritization. You have to be really good at not only getting things done, but only doing what needs to be done. Okay, so there's a huge tension here. You can never make it up in hard work. It's impossible. There are not enough hours in the day and days in the week to do everything. If you don't recognize that early, you will never understand the necessity of working well with others, letting them be to get it done, not looking over the shoulders, just letting them get it done. Because if you're looking over the shoulders, that's time you're spending. So you gotta learn to trust. You gotta learn to let them fail. You gotta hope they'll succeed. You have to be humble, because you have to realize they're probably better at many things than you are. Furthermore, it's leverage. The whole point of starting a business successfully is to leverage the world around you. That means other people do stuff that you don't control. You kind of got to get good at that and comfortable at the fact that it's going to be a bit out of control. And you have to do as little as is humanly possible.